Nancy Pelosi has led Democrats in the House of Representatives for more than 15 years. And more and more of those Democrats are fed up. As of today, more than 50 Democrat congressmen and congressional candidates say they would not support Mrs. Pelosi for Speaker if the party retakes the majority. You will have a vote as part of the Democratic caucus as to who will be the next Democratic leader, whether it be the minority leader or the Speaker of the House. Will you vote for Nancy Pelosi? Probably not. You have said you will not support Nancy Pelosi should you become uh, elected there as the next speaker or Democratic leader in the House. Folks are ready for a new generation of leadership. Would you back Pelosi for speaker if you win and are in the House? Well, I think, again, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Hmm. Mark Penn was a pollster and advisor to both Bill and Hillary Clinton. And uh, he joins us. Mark, uh, 15 years in the modern age is a hell of a long time to be holding down a, a, a party leadership job like this. Is Nancy finally in trouble? Uh, I think trouble's kind of overrated here. Look, if the Democrats win the House, she will have done the fundraising, the messaging. Uh, she will be in a very strong position and she will be strengthening herself most likely in California, and the California delegation is solidly behind her. So I don't actually think she's going anywhere if, if she wins. Uh, on the other hand, I think there are a fair number of politicians that for the purpose of the election, because she's unpopular nationally, want to distance themselves from her. And I think eventually there will be a change. And the other thing that could happen here is the Problem Solvers Caucus. If this race is within five or six seats on either way, Democrats or Republicans, they may hold up the election for speaker unless there are rules changes that put some power back in the members hands well let's let's just step back and uh, and talk about what you said at the beginning about whether she is in in trouble or not uh, once upon a time if you were a loser uh, you got a second chance uh, whether it's uh, Grover Cleveland Richard Nixon whoever it is we're talking about we live in much more brutal political times and Nancy Pelosi hasn't actually won uh, in the House for 10 years now, for five, uh, uh, four elections and possibly a fifth. How is it, what's the secret of her power there? How is it she's managed to hold her grip on this caucus? Uh, California, uh, fundraising, mm. uh, personality and organization. Uh, and remember, what's happened here is that the fundraising and the political campaigns largely got centralized, giving more power to the leaders. Right. That's one of the big reasons nothing gets done on both <laughs> sides, because the leaders have too much power and the members aren't free to go agree on stuff. Well, let, let's turn from uh, the minority leader to a well-known New York City madam, not any connection between the two of them, but the self-described Manhattan madam. Uh, Kristen Davis testified today before the Mueller investigation's grand jury. Uh, why she did that is unclear, but Miss Davis has been a friend to longtime Trump advisor Roger Stone. If you have difficulty keeping your metropolitan madams straight, this is the one who claimed to have uh, provided hookers for uh, Elliot Spitzer, who was uh, then the Democrat governor of New York. Mark, what's, what, how did the Mueller investigation uh, end up uh, calling the Manhattan madam before the grand jury? Well, look, I lived through 98, so I know that there are no rocks which special counsels mm. will stop from turning over. Mm. And I think it's unfortunate that the special counsel's gone down this road. I think Roger Stone has been clear. He didn't collude with anybody. He was up to maybe some of his usual political tricks and, and bragging, and they're obviously interviewing everybody around him, regardless of the connection, just as they're interviewing everybody around Trump. Quite interestingly, one of Roger Stone's other associates, I think of Mr. Miller, appealed the subpoena. And I think, although it was turned down at the district mm. level, it's actually the most fascinating case, which might be the case that unravels the entire independent counsel investigation if it's appealed.
Yeah, because the way this thing, I mean, that, that is a very interesting appeal, because this thing doesn't meet any basic judicial norms, uh, what the special counsel does. Basically, he goes down the chain, so he wants to talk to this, uh, this madam, because she's got something on some other guy, and then uh, he can put the squeeze on that other guy, and the other guy can roll up another guy, and eventually, somewhere in that chain, they'll find someone who has the goods on Trump. Uh, well, why do Democrats and Republicans put up with this? Why isn't there a bipartisan understanding of the need to get rid of this thing? Uh, look, I, I wish there were. I, I fought Ken Starr in 98, mm -hmm. and I've been outspoken that I think this investigation is wrong. Well, look, I think Judge Ellis in the Manafort trial mm -hmm. clearly knows that Manafort is on trial by the independent counsel with the entire weight of the largest prosecutorial machinery right. almost ever built, only because he spent two months as Trump campaign manager. Yeah, absolutely. He might have had an assessment, he might have had a trial, but not two indictments, not the... the no. not not even, even without bail, even Harvey Weinstein is out on a million dollars bail. Right, right. So you, you, you see that this is not the way anybody really expect the American justice system uh, to work. And it, I am puzzled that more Democrats and Republicans, look, hatred for Trump is so broad well, that I think people are forgetting the first principles is that we all have to agree on a system that's fair to all. Ab absolutely.